plurality of opinions on legal matters is rampant in Islam and it bothered me to no limits in my agnostic days. For example, three canonical schools of Sunni legal thought prohibit keeping of dogs as pets while a fourth one, namely the Maliki school, allows it. So here we have two different opinions extracted from the same sources. An apparent inconsistency in the Islamic framework? Not really. With deeper analysis, I recognize that these two different opinions can be applied to two different scenarios, like the tools in the kitty of a mechanic who in his wisdom knows which tool to be applied under which circumstances. In a culture where it's easy to keep the dogs clean, avail proper medical care, get them vaccinated, have dedicated washrooms so that they do not defile the living spaces of the house, and other related facilities that ensure the cleanliness of the dog and its surroundings. In such a culture, it should be fine to keep dogs as pets. On the contrary, in a culture where dogs are filthy as a norm, as was the case in the days of the Prophet Muhammad, then in such a culture, it would be wise to discourage the keeping of dogs as pets. Therefore, the different opinions are actually useful and make the Islamic framework more robust, enabling Islam to be applied to different scenarios in different times and places. And robustness is one of the hallmarks of a true framework of knowledge.